The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Aloha, buddy. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? What's going on, buddy? Pretty good. Just got back from vacation last night. Very nice. Oh, nice, man. Awesome. Y'all, y'all relaxed or were you watching the, the price the entire time? <laughs> No, I, I hardly looked at it at all. Just uh, nice. a little bit in the morning. Good, Sweet. good. You deserve so, it. And my jaw dropped when I got home and, and checked it Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to reality. Yeah. It's funny, man. Like when you when you're in positions and you go on vacation, you're just like there there is a part of your brain that's like, I mean, the last thing I did before I left was check all the charts and say, should I sell? Should I stay in these positions? I got some shit coins, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, ultimately, I said, "No, nah, just let it ride. Everything looks pretty normal." Um, and then Friday, everything just seemed to crash. So we'll talk yeah. about that. Did you have like stop losses in and stuff? You and oh, um, no, uh, I, this is it's like confession time, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But they're ERC twenties. That's what I'm trading, and you can put limit orders on Ethereum. But yeah. um, I typically don't use stop losses because I'm typically just totally on top of the markets. Um, so it, it was a little bit maybe irresponsible to go on vacay, but I mean, again, it's, it's not like, it's not the majority of my holdings. So Shit. It's, it's only something that if I lost, they'd be like, well, sad, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was something you were kind of pseudo gambling with to make, to make yeah, more exactly. Panera, I assume. Of course. So yeah, man, give us the, the good, the bad and the ugly. Well, we'll start. Just to help calm everyone's nerves, we'll start with all the regular um, macro stuff because on that front, everything looks pretty good. Like uh, I didn't see anything that looked too crazy. Um, so, for example, like we start with the dollar index, it's just kind of chopping sideways. Um, we're we're really I, I kind of do expect this probably you know to to end up somewhere down here in this area. Um, that's just kind of the long term chart pattern there. So the Dixie didn't really do anything too special. Um, the stock market was was overall just pretty flat, um, kind of a longer term here. We've got bonds. Bonds are basically normal, just kind of hanging out here. Maybe a little bit of positive momentum, um, but uh, but not too much, um, which, which is fine. Like if we see the 10-year yield, for example, just moderate, stable, slightly positive, that should be good for, um, for risk assets. We've got the yield curve. Uh, everything looks pretty normal there. We, we don't have any crazy... Um, this, this pink line down here, which is the overall yield curve inversion, that's not spiking up like crazy. So, I mean, everything just, just looks pretty normal to me. Um, we take a look at the Federal Reserve assets again. So we keep, we keep a track. Uh, we're keeping track of this because we saw such a massive spike for two weeks when the whole banking scare happened. Um, but this continues to come down. It's probably going to keep coming down just slowly, little by little. Um, I don't want to see this thing drop below this point right here. If this thing comes all the way back down and then starts dropping even more, um, that will definitely be a sign that, hey, maybe maybe this run has run its course and it's time to start uh, thinking about playing protection mode again. Um, But as we talked about last week, I'm still kind of really playing with the idea that this sort of mini bull market could last longer than I thought. Um, It would be really funny if things topped in June, just like they did in 2019, (laughs) If, if like crypto and everything topped in June. And then um, spent the next, you know, six to nine months just going down. Um, Gold was uh, gold has been interesting as well. After breaking out and really looking like it wants to break out, it just kind of got slammed back down again, Um, which is funny because it's kind of what happened to crypto, too. So I think somewhere in the back of my mind, is there some kind of force in the background sort of, you know, trying to keep that suppressed a little bit? It is true that the stock market is doing pretty well. Um, Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. NASDAQ has been doing um, better than the S&P over the past few months. Uh, but we're basically in this channel here. You know, this was kind of the bottom. This is where they sort of put a floor on the markets with just enough intervention to keep things from crashing. We developed positive divergence um, where the Z scores or the RSI, whichever one you like to look at, was making higher lows. Um, and uh, even though price had kind of made a lower low right here. So um stocks i mean they just look stable they look like they're still kind of on their upward trajectory but very very slowly which is responsible i think that's great that's what we want to see um we just we just overall in the markets right now we don't want to see crazy big movements those those are the kind of things that 
sort of force either force the Fed's hand to act like to take more severe action to prevent the inflation from coming back. Um, because if we see stock markets kind of pushing towards their previous all time high and then trying to go for new highs, that's probably a bad sign for inflation. So but, you know, we don't want to see the markets crash either. Right. We want to at least like hold on to the gains that we have now and get slow, steady, progressive gains. Um, so I think that's we're just like kind of in this long, steady state um, period here for stocks, for macro, for everything else. Um, let's see here. Lately, the S&P has been catching up. So this is the NASDAQ to S&P ratio. This is kind of this going down means that the S&P is outperforming the NASDAQ. Um, so NASDAQ being tech stocks, S&P being more traditional, um, large cap kind of stuff, non-tech stocks. And that's been for maybe the last few weeks. Uh, it's been the S&P has been outperforming. But that would make sense. It needs to catch up a little bit. The banking scare hit the S&P harder. It took the S&P longer to recover. Overall, um, everything looks pretty good. Although I did think it was interesting. So this is the SSE composite. This is China, basically Shanghai index, um, which is a composite of the, the big China stocks. Um, and they had a pretty big tumble starting, when was that, Thursday, Wednesday? Yeah, so they, they had a pretty big tumble there, um, which I thought was odd because they looked pretty good. But um, this is still kind of like in its range for its recent history. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about this. It could just be sort of retesting uh, these dotted lines, uh, if you will. Not that the dotted lines matter, but, you know, they're drawn because uh, those are sort of spots of significance. So with all that in mind, um, let's go to crypto and, and take a look at this big drop. We'll just start with Bitcoin. And uh, this drop started on, on Wednesday and then just sort of kept on going on Thursday. And we got out of this yellow box, you know, that we'd drawn previously, which was kind of a very natural spot for us to look at the, the summer lows here. And then, uh, sorry, the summer of 2020, 2021 lows and then the, uh, the May of 2022 bear market sort of interim sideways chop. And we just fell out of that. But at the same time, it's like, OK, this is this is still clearly within the pattern here. Um, I do wonder to myself if there is some kind of fundamental event that caused this because everything else looked pretty fine. I, I, I couldn't really see a reason why stocks should, uh, or sorry, Bitcoin and the rest of crypto should drop so violently. Uh, what was that? About 11% on Bitcoin. And then I think a little bit more um, for some of the other coins. So, uh, but overall, I mean, you look at this and you say, eh, okay, it's, you know, we were kind of trying to break out of this rising resistance. It keeps looking like we're doing it and then it just crashes down. Um, Maybe a, a side note that I've started to um, that I started to think about. We've got these um, these sort of neural network AIs that are hitting the scene now, and people are learning how to code them, how to program them. A lot of a lot of them are open source, right? They're on GitHub. Um, there is nuance into how you code them, but there are very smart people, um, and especially you can bet that big firms are getting into this and they're training up their own AIs. Um, they're using all different types of um, of strategies, they're pumping loads and loads of price data into these AIs to trade the markets then. So I do wonder if the markets are going to start acting, are going to start trading differently than they used to. Um, they're going to start identifying patterns, exploiting patterns um, that people couldn't see or that very, very few people could see. Um, so that could change the market dynamic. But whether this is AI or whether this is some fundamental event, I'm not too sure. Um, like I said, I kind of just got home last night. If we look over here, Tuesday uh, on March 14th, we saw that the market dropped like 9%, um, really maybe 10%. This right here was the United States government selling, oh, how much was it? I think it was 50,000 Bitcoin. And they still got like another 150,000 that they want to sell. So it's like Bitcoin is breaking out, doing good stuff. And then just bam, got slammed down because they did a market sell. I believe it was on Coinbase. Um, so it's possible that some of this, maybe the government is selling Bitcoin again. And since like all the coins are sort of locked together, their um, their liquidity is sort of locked together. Um, there's there's sort of a number of a number of reasons for why cryptos all sort of tend to trade together. Um, I think primarily it's because there's a certain amount of actual like fiat cash sloshing around in the crypto ecosystem overall, in terms of like exchanges and, and companies and whatnot, and that amount of cash can support certain prices for a lot of coins. And I still believe that basically all the coins are or overinflated, propped up. Um, but hey, you know, I mean, it looks like they can do it for long periods of time. So, you know, then you might argue, well, that's just the market price. And okay, maybe um, a lot of these coins are just totally centralized in supply and the people that hold that central supply are smart enough not to just dump them on the market. Um, 
So, you know, I mean, it's kind of like we could sort of debate back and forth about what, whether that's a real market dynamic or a fake market dynamic or it's false or propped up. But at any rate, the point is that we, um, we, we, we've seen that, uh, that these prices, you know, can basically be sustained in this area. And I think that the reason that crypto prices trade together is because the amount of actual fiat cash in the crypto ecosystem is a factor in how high they can support those prices and how much leverage um, can be taken there. So if the United States government sells 50,000 Bitcoin and takes out, you know, I, I don't know how many billions of dollars uh, that would be, um, you know, that's going to remove real cash, real fiat from the crypto system, which is kind of going to affect what prices can do. Um, so they all sort of prices tend to all trade together. But the other thing is that a lot of these coins are just traded pairs against each other. So, uh, you know, like, for example, everything trades against Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of liquidity there. So because their liquidity is bonded together, you'll see their prices in terms of U.S. dollars move together. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't have any big opinions today on whether this goes up or down. Um, it doesn't look great. Uh, the Z scores, maybe let's go to a shorter time frame. Maybe we can see something there. You might be able to say right here that um, that Z scores are showing a kind of positive divergence, right? We've made lower lows on the price. These the <laughs> the Z scores have made higher lows. Um, I would be a little bit concerned with this guy right here, this um, sort of brown line that just poked up above uh, in a big way, these sort of downsloping longer term Z scores. Um, typically, that typically that's not a great sign. Um, that's sort of like that, that. That's basically the way I look at that is kind of a liquidity run. You've got price moving against the momentum, um, but at the same time, we're looking like we're changing momentum. Uh, overall, you might think to yourself, you know, this really, really long uh, line right here would be a pretty natural spot to go for. I would really, really like to see us not actually go lower than, um, you know, than these lows down here, uh, right? It, ideally, if things are all looking good, you want to see this hold the support, kind of come back up here, you know, maybe do that. Um, and that would be totally fine. Again, if like so far, the name of the game has just been stay in, stay in the market, right? There was some crazy stuff that happened in March, you know, whatever. But after that got backstopped and everyone was comfortable again, markets just went right back to the top. So. Um, yeah, we got a pullback going on here. It feels bad. Probably, you know, like, yeah, that's 10%. We could have traded that. Um, but overall, I mean, it's hard to believe that this run is just over. Uh, everything else looks fine. So um, really, I would I would probably encourage people just to just to hodl for the meantime. If you're, you know, if you didn't already get out, right, if you didn't take any profit up there, if you're still in it, probably stay in the market. Um, let's see. Total looks basically the same thing. It's, it's kind of the same deal here. Uh, and so with that, we can go to XMR. We, um, you know, just so we can have like solid, good perspective to understand, um, you know, what XMR might do. We're um, we're basically looking at uh, we were we were sort of above the uh, that that bear market resistance line, and then we just crashed down below it. Although we didn't get hit any harder um, than anyone else, like XMR crashed about the same as everything else, perhaps even less. Right? We actually XMR has um, been rising against Bitcoin. Um, how much did we crash? Actually, let's look at the, the actual number on that. That was 8%, but we've already kind of rebounded, so we're about 7% down. Maybe you could say we're 8% down. So, yeah, we Bitcoin crashed maybe 11%. Monero crashed about 7 or 8%. So um, let's see. Let's go back to this chart. Go to the shorter time frame now. It wouldn't surprise me at all um, to just retake this line. Uh, we see this with Monero all too often where... Um, it just like it'll break a line. It'll look like it's good. It's solid. It's going to go, and then it'll just like break back down. It's just kind of weird. Um, it does definitely look good to be an even shorter time frame. It definitely does look like we've got divergence here on the uh, from the Z scores. So lower lows on the price, higher lows on Z scores. Um, this right here probably was even a bit predictable just from this divergence. So there's a good chance that this this thing recovers above the uh, above that bear market resistance line. I really kind of need to spend a few hours just scrutinizing everything, um, letting letting my brain churn on it uh, to see what you know what I think might really happen here. Um, okay, we've also got think Monero can slowly start to climb up against Bitcoin here, given the the downturn. I mean, my antis my anticipation was that Monero was going to play in this area down here. Um, I did expect that, but um, we've got positive divergence again. Like the Z scores are just showing all kinds of divergences over the past, um, really the past week. Uh, so we've got kind of this going on right here. You can see the green line is is kind of um, still going a little bit lower, um, 
but we do have positive divergence on Monero versus Bitcoin, right? So this is XMRPTC PC chart right here, um, which would suggest, you know, that we might actually come back up to somewhere uh, to this line, right? Maybe to this line or maybe even into this range right here. Um, let's take a look at the shorter time frames. Yeah, I mean, this, this looks like a bottoming pattern, right? In a lot of ways, you look at this and um, it just naturally kind of looks like a bottoming pattern. Um, bottoming patterns are, can be funny, right? Because this thing could just kind of do, oops. Okay, so bottoming patterns could do something, you know, like this, and then just take like some crazy dip down, right? Maybe Bitcoin goes on some crazy big run for like two weeks and, you know, XMR BTC gets left out and then just bounces back up. Like bottoming patterns do that kind of stuff. Um, so it doesn't mean that we couldn't make any lower lows, but it does, it is starting to look like the beginning of XMR BTC having the potential for reversing. Um, but we're talking longer time frames. We're talking over the next one month, maybe two months. So hopefully that, that answers your question. Okay. After that, oh, I thought we might look at um, Bitcoin versus the stock market today. Just a quick, quick look at it. We're on the daily chart right here. Um, it was interesting. This, this line right here to me was sort of the most interesting um, for quite a while, just because that was like capping the Bitcoin price for a long time. Um, then there was this kind of like broadening structure almost, and then uh, things broke to the upside. And um, now, so that's the June 2021 lows, uh, and then this was the May and June 2022. And basically, you know, we're kind of just playing in that range here. It looks like we wanted to get above, but um, it's probable. What I'm seeing a lot of, and probably you guys have noticed, are these sort of channels, these upward sloping channels. And it, at the moment that something looks like it's about to break, it might break, then it just comes back down. Um, that was true of the NASDAQ, go back to the NASDAQ, right? So the NASDAQ, we kind of got this upsloping channel, looks like it might break there, come back down, and then it's sort of just trending in that channel. Same thing happened for, for Bitcoin, um, kind of, sort of, for Bitcoin. It's not exactly so much a channel, you know, it's more like rising resistance, but um, things are just kind of like grinding higher on these uh, on these upsloping resistances. So um, I'm seeing that here also on the... Um, Bitcoin versus the NASDAQ. We can also look at total versus uh, versus NASDAQ. And um, it's not quite as bullish as Bitcoin has been. Um, you can see that we're basically still capped by the FTX doom level here. Um, and then these sort of summer lows that happened last year. Um, but just good to keep perspective. I think um, I, I call it cross check. When you're looking at an asset and you want to understand what it's going to do, you're, you're really well served by taking that asset and looking at it relative to other assets. Like, so for example, here I've got Bitcoin um, versus the NASDAQ. I've got uh, Bitcoin versus bonds, uh, VTI, which is like a Vanguard um, aggregate bond valuation um, index. And then we've also got uh, BTC versus gold. And so it's just good to get a, a feel for how each asset compares against other assets um, because you'll see similar chart patterns develop. Um, like right now for Bitcoin versus gold, um, you might look at this and say, okay, this is fairly significant, right? It was resistance. Now it looks like it's trying to develop the support. It's a little bit below it at the moment, but that doesn't mean it has to break down. We want to see this come to the upside again. Um, but if it does come down here and break down, you might think, okay, well, maybe gold's about to you know, make a big run. I don't think so. I really think that will come back up. But anyways, um, just kind of a, a tip out there for people that, that look at a lot of charts. Um, take different assets, especially different asset classes, and divide them by each other. So... Um, I guess we could take one look at the, um, the divergences. Monero has been in negative price divergences all week long um, by basically across all the exchanges. So uh, again, I don't know exactly if that necessarily means anything, um, but you know, we did have kind of price crashes this week and things were in negative divergence. That still seems to be a pattern I see a lot of when we have sort of broad crashes or sharp crashes on prices. Uh, for Monero and XMR USD, we do see these negative divergences developing. So. Um, so yeah, I think um, overall, um, hopefully no one's panicking. Things look pretty normal. Um, I would not be surprised for Monero to, to break back through this resistance, and that would actually be very powerful. If um, you know we come up here, we come down, maybe. The one thing that I don't like, so if you guys remember, I was talking about um, how it would have been nicer to break this with more momentum to the upside before coming back down to test it. Um, I think I said that maybe last week. And this is kind of the reason why it's like if we had had more momentum up here, this crash could have just sent us down to test this and you'd feel more comfortable. Right now, I look at this and I wonder, are we just going to oscillate down this line a little bit? Is that like the plan until 
you know, the price pressure is too much to be contained. I don't know. Um, but, uh, well, anyways, um, happy Monero birthday to everybody. April 18th, Moni Run. And uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Yeah, th thanks uh, Thanks for doing this right after your vacay. Um, I, I know you kind of touched upon a little bit, but yeah, but what is kind of your gut feel as to what is causing this this downturn on a on a fundamental level like well i, I i've been kind of caught up in monerotopia in the conference i've been following the the day-to-day -day in crypto land too well like what what do you think is causing this general downturn is i think it's um it could very well be the united states government they have 150,000 bitcoin i believe it is left that they want to sell i think they were like 220 it was somewhere around 200,000 Bitcoin that they had to sell. Um, like I said, in March 13th, they sold, I think it was 50,000. Um, they were like Silk Road Bitcoins. Um, I, that wouldn't surprise me at all because this 10% this drop is about the same as the drop that happened back then. And it also kind of came out of nowhere. Like everything else, everything else looked normal. It, it didn't look like this drop should be this severe. At the same time, like this, this is just charts, right? That's just how trading can be. Charts can just do weird volatile things like that. Um, there's people, there's traders out there, there's leverage, um, there's a lot of players. Um, so, oh, you know, there's also one more thing. Um, and maybe this isn't a big factor. I was reading a thread uh, by someone named Tay. I think you follow them, actually. I, I, was, I was trying to check them out and understand who they are. I don't really know who they are. Okay. Um, but someone named Tay. And they're actually followed by like quite a lot of people. I think like Jesse Powell um, and, and a whole bunch of other people. So uh, apparently what's happening is OGs are getting raided right now. They're like, they're getting their funds drained um, and they don't, they can't find any commonalities. Like some people have said it was a MetaMask thing, but it doesn't seem to be that because other wallets are affected. Some of these guys have funds mm -hmm. in their hardware wallet. Um, and apparently like their hardware wallets are getting drained. Mm -hmm. um, and they've had forensic analysis on on their devices, and no one can find anything like what happened, what's gone wrong. And this um, is all a th Ethereum. That's, that's it. Happening? Seemed like it's Ethereum heavy, but it also looks like there was XRP, uh, Litecoin. They even said XMR. So really? uh, we're not really sure because it seems like it's not just MetaMask. It's not just Ethereum. Um, there's other wallets involved, and it's not noobs. It's all OGs, people that should have relatively good security. Um, yeah. So I think the recommendation was for, hey, OGs, if you've had funds, if you, so one, if you've had a, the same C phrase across multiple devices at this point, you need to migrate your funds to a new C phrase, um, you know, on one device. Um, obviously, you know, <clears throat> you don't want those keys to have ever hit the internet. Um, I have some slight disagreement with that, but 99.9% .9 of people probably shouldn't really store their private keys in a, in a hot environment um unless you're someone like i don't know maybe seth that really knows what they're doing with um, security systems and cubes um and stuff like that um and even then like it's just dangerous but okay but anyways the point is that um it does seem like people that have had funds on the same wallets for for years and have never rotated their seed phrase rotated their keys um it seems to be like those are the guys getting drained but um but we really don't know like we just don't know what's yeah, possible I, so, I, I did see that during the week and i was just kind of like huh just kind of like scrolled by it but yeah the other, so, that is hacks extremely, are, extremely significant yeah had to, like it kind of yeah anybody that has any that's been following that story uh maybe you want to jump up on stage later that is yeah i really would if someone has more information on that because i could only see tay and then a couple people that were like that i thought had, it was just i thought it was just ethereum that it was happening not that i mean even that's you know that's uh interesting story nonetheless but you're saying it, it's happened to various different cryptos and so geez. yeah it's it, it's heavy on ethereum but it's um it really is everything so i uh, breathed a sigh of relief when i got home and uh you know saw that my my funds were all still there because <laughs> i was um you know i've been doing a, a little bit of trading using ethereum erc20 shitcoin stuff like that mm -hmm. um and to get the best rates i'm using um, you know, these websites like Matcha and uh, One Inch. And so it's like, okay, I, I have, a you know, more funds than I would like to lose, but enough that I'm willing to risk, um, you know, but I've been using these websites and every time I use it, I'm like, dang. So I'm just like going to this place saying, hey, I want to swap these coins. Okay, click this button in your MetaMask and it trades and every time it works. And I'm like, 
you know, I'm ha I, I even divided my funds up into multiple wallets because I was like, man, I don't want to get taken, you know, for all my funds at once. At least I can divide them into multiple wallets and, and you know, limit my losses if anything bad happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a whole experience. I got home and the first thing I did was like, okay, open up the laptop, update everything, um, restart the laptop, spin up a virtual machine, take my other virtual machines offline, open them up, get my, uh, get my, uh, my public key, check it on a block explorer and a separate virtual machine to make sure the funds are still there. Okay. They're still there. Delete the old virtual machines and then re-import my private, uh, my seed phrase into a brand new virtual machine that, uh, you know, shouldn't be compromised. Um, and then, you know, set up a new wallet, transfer everything. So it's like a whole thing, you know, basically stress, High stress kind of stuff. <laughs> Just buy gold, man, and go bury it somewhere. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, and go on vacation. I think, <laughs> <laughs> just carry a treasure map tattooed on the inside of my butt cheek, you know. <laughs> just in case I get a concussion on vacation, remember where my gold's buried. <laughs> oh, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, yeah, no, I just pulled up the art. Yeah, this this article that I'm seeing in Decrypt, there's they're they're just mentioning Ethereum, but yeah, maybe it's more. It's a hacker has stolen 10 million in Ethereum, and no one knows how. A hacker has been targeting OG crypto users since December, draining their wallets and leaving experts baffled. Um, that's on Decrypt as of three days ago, but yeah, maybe uh, maybe it is beyond that. You you saw other cryptos getting mentioned, huh? Tay, Tay, I'm just going off of what Tay said, and mm -hmm. um. I, I didn't know Tay until, you know, a few days ago. Okay. Um, yeah, a buddy of mine sent it to me uh, when I was uh, when I was on vacay. So I was like, crazy. Hey. crazy. All crazy. right. Well, uh, thank you as always. Thank, thank you. you. And we will be in touch. Stick around if you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. All right, man. All right, awesome. Cheers. Thank you. Later, guys. Next week. Bye-bye.